In today's video, we're going to be talking about going into document properties and understanding the information contained within. So once you have a document open, you can get to the properties by going to File and then Properties towards the bottom of the list, which will open up this dialog menu that has six tabs of different purposes. So the first one will show you the file name and the extension itself as you have it saved on your computer followed by some other general information such as file size and bytes, the location on your computer, what type of document it is, which corresponds with the file extension type, when it was originally created, the last time it was modified, and by modified it means the last time it was modified and also saved. So if you currently have it open, it's not going to show the current time, it's going to show the last time you've saved it. You can also see what people have actually signed the document with their digital signatures, which we'll get into more in the next video, but it's a way of proving that the document was edited or approved by whoever is supposed to have actually seen and approved the document. So it's proving that people are who they say they are when they send you a document. Beyond that, we have the last time it was printed. If you have never printed the document, then of course it's going to say nothing here. It also shows total editing time, which does not include the time since you've begun this session unless you have actually saved your document again. And it will show the number of revisions right here, the current revision number six, meaning I've saved it a total of six times. In the description tab, we can actually set metadata for the document. Now this is very rarely actually important. But if you were in Windows to right click on a .odt document, go to Properties, you would be able to find this information like the title, the subject, and keywords that you've associated with your document itself. Primarily this tab is just about adding extra information to describe what the document is about. You can also add in extra pieces of data to the document in the Custom Properties tab, which isn't normally associated with the document, but you certainly can add it in. Different fields and values, much like a database table. So here we can put in arbitrary information that someone may actually need or want to access. Uh, but what you put in here is very much up to you. It could be any text field. It could be a date time, like the current date and time, for instance. And we could just name that current date and time. And let's just say... For the sake of argument, it was 10 a.m. July 14th. So we'd have that data in there, and then someone could look at that and use it in whatever needs they needed it for. In the Internet tab, we can have the document refresh automatically. And this could be useful if you have the document somewhere on a network or online where many people may be making changes to it, or it could be a document which is going to be edited by an administrator and other people need to see the updated information. So if you have any needs like that, where it would be in the best interest of whoever's going to be accessing the document, that it refreshes automatically with new information, then you can have that selected right there. Now, another thing you can do on the Internet tab is if you want the document to actually redirect somebody to a URL, uh, for instance, this could be for marketing purposes, you can select redirect from this document, set a time trigger, and then give a URL. The security tab would allow you to make the file open and read only mode, which is fine if you want to prevent people from actually editing the document. And if you want to go beyond that, you can protect the read-only mode, where only people with a password can actually disable it, by setting a password and confirming it right here. Then in order to disable read-only mode, they'd have to put in the password. Another neat thing you can do with the document is to have changes be recorded. So if you have this checked and you start typing things into the document, or anybody does, it'll actually say who edited the document and at what time did they edit the document. And that's really good for tracking if somebody's been playing around with it, making bad changes to the document, or just to see who's actually been doing all the work and who hasn't, for instance. In the Statistics tab of Properties, you can see a bunch of extra automatically calculated information, such as number of pages, number of paragraphs, words, and characters. Now, in general, this isn't going to be too useful, but if you wanted to see something very specific or very quick, such as how many words you have in your document, maybe you have a minimum threshold you want to meet, 
Or maybe you got sent a document by one of your students and wanted to know if they actually put in uh, the required amount of work into the document or if they just cheated by increasing the font size. Uh, you could find out exactly how many words they've actually typed just by going to statistics and properties. And that might be useful for you. For many people, it's probably something you're never really going to need to play around with, but it's good to know that it's there. So that's it for the properties menu of OpenOffice Writer. In the next video, we'll be going into how to actually set a digital signature and signing documents inside of OpenOffice Writer to prove that you are who you say you are when you're sending documents to other people, or if you're receiving documents from other people likewise to identify who is or who isn't sending them. Until the next video, see you then.